Okay, good uh, evening, guys. Welcome back to another Not So Late Night Show. And um, this time, we are still going to talk about a company in Malaysia. Uh, it's one of the very few so-called show-win business. So, uh, previously, we talked about Tanaga. Uh, we talked about uh, Busan, Malaysia, which is also in a, considered a show-win business. So, today, we will be touching uh, our national grid uh, provider, which is also listed on the Malaysia Stock Exchange. And since... It is the uh, biggest and only um, energy provider grid that uh, most of us are using. Uh, it's considered a show win business. So does that mean that the stock price uh, will always uh, be on the upside together with the potential payout of dividends? Right? Of course, uh, before we delve in deeper, uh, here you have a disclaimer. Basically, do whatever due diligence that you need. Whatever we share right here is just information that will point you to the right directions to, you know, uh, study whatever that is necessary. Do not take it as a buy, sell or hold uh, advice and do your due diligence. All right. Uh, without further delay, let's dive straight into the business info of the Naga National Bahad. So, Chumping, uh, what does the Naga National actually do? Yeah, I think most of us, uh, if you're Malaysian, you should be uh, hearing, I mean, should be knowing this company. Uh, that you need them uh, to survive. Uh, if on a very fine day, suddenly uh, your house went out of electricity, I think uh, most of the activity uh, uh, will be impacted. So this is like something that uh, everyone needs every single day. So that's why we take it under the so-called showing business. But of course, uh, their entire business is regulated and mostly uh, owned by the government. So that's why uh, uh, it's very stable, but it also has some, uh, I would say, root block uh, when they wanted to scale further. But I will tell you why uh, in the in the next few slides, right? So uh, just a quick history or quick information about uh, TNB. So of course, they are the largest uh, electricity uh, uh, provider in Malaysia. Uh, of course, they uh, beside uh, having a very good portfolio in Malaysia. Uh, they also have their footprint uh, in multiple uh, countries uh, in the name of uh, UK, Kuwait, Turkey, and so on. And then uh, they listed in Busan for quite long, uh, I mean, uh, back in 1992. So at the moment, uh, they are serving about 10 million uh, customers from uh, normal household user like me and you uh, down to commercial player, industry player, uh, and so on. So this is basically some part of uh, what is the people they are serving right now. So uh, they also support something like uh, the street light and, and so on, right? So uh, before we go into how their business actually performing, uh, the next slide actually tell you uh, what is the actual footprint they have uh, internationally. So you can see the first one is actually uh, one of the uh, investment done by TNBI. Uh, the uh, TMB investments in Nambahat. Uh, so they actually uh, own 100% uh, of it, uh, especially for this uh, power plant under the Naga Wind Ventures. So in the UK, so they, they mainly uh, venture into two renewable energy. So one of it is actually uh, the wind uh, related uh, energy, another one is solar. And of course, uh, the second one is they also have a power plant uh, doing the operation and maintenance uh, in Kuwait. Uh, and they also have some small uh, states uh, in Turkey uh, under this uh, game Energia's uh, 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 power plant. Uh, they also have some uh, small state in uh, Saudi Arabia. So this is a form uh, country. And then the next slide also give you, beside uh, in the UK and also Middle East, uh, they also have some uh, supporting some of the uh, power plant in India, Pakistan, Indonesia, and Cambodia. But of course, uh, if you zoom in too further, uh, uh, they not only are providing the traditional electricity uh, like using coils or, or hydro, they also go into uh, supporting some of the uh, renewable energy sectors, right? But nevertheless, uh, the next slide actually give you a quick summary on what is the impact. So regardless, uh, uh, still majority of the revenue uh, come from TMB supporting the Malaysian markets. So you can see uh, the one come from uh, TMB alone is about 40 over uh, millions. 
uh, 40, 40 over uh, billions. Uh, and then, of course, uh, you also have the second one is actually SESB, uh, the Sabah Electricity and Bahad, also owned by them. Uh, while the rest are uh, contributing, uh, I think, less than about 2 to 3%. I mean, those come from international markets. So you got uh, some of the number uh, coming from the UK bins under the TNBI. Uh, also, some come from Vortex. Uh, both of these is actually in UK, and then uh, the the third one uh, actually named under LPL is actually Liberty Power Limited. Uh, is the one coming from Pakistan. So the rest is, although we shown is about uh, eight different places, but then uh, the rest is quite insignificant at the moment. But of course, I think it's also good that uh, they have already uh, pushed their. Uh, business portfolio beyond Malaysia, I think it's a good sign. But of course, now it's still very, very uh, insignificant when you talk about the impact to the revenue. And then moving on uh, is to tell you uh, what is the key contributor by sector. Of course, a uh, majority of the customer is actually from uh, the household user, like me and, and, and you. But uh, in terms of revenue contribution, uh, commercial and industry uh, play the big part. And this actually hit them quite badly uh, uh, last year uh, because uh, uh, in the light of MCO, uh, a lot of business activity is impacted. And of course, the first thing that hit them is they don't need to operate, let's say, the factory or even office tower, and then the, they don't need to turn on the electricity. So uh, this actually big, uh, give a big impact, even though you might argue that, uh, yeah, we didn't spend our time in, in the office, but we spend our time in, uh, in our house. But bear in mind the the rate uh, that you are paying uh, as a residential uh, titles buildings compared to a commercial building is quite different. So this is some of the uh, impact that uh, hit them uh, during 2020. Uh, 2021, uh, the impact continue on until uh, the MCO is fully lifted. Lah. Yeah. And then moving on, uh, they give you uh, the overall uh, shareholding uh, by TNB. So 70.7% is actually owned by uh, various government agencies. So you can call it as a state-owned company, uh, government link. And then they are heavily uh, tied to the performance or the growth of the GDP of Malaysia. And of course, there's some of the uh, uh, hold, shareholding is actually uh, held by the foreign countries. Uh, so uh, if you talk about the breakdown, some of it actually come from North Af America. Uh, some, some of it come from Asia. So this is uh, basically tell you the breakdown of the shareholding. And then uh, the next slide is to give you an overview on uh, how electricity is made. Right. So uh, so this slide is actually quite straightforward. Lah. So on the left, the one that we actually put in the red outline, the boxes, uh, is the main field to actually uh, uh, generate the electricity. So you need all these uh, 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 resources so that you can burn them and then eventually they can power up the stream tur turbine and the turbine actually can generate the electricity and subsequently it will pass on to the substation and uh, go out through the electricity grid and eventually uh, uh, enter your house or your office. So uh, uh, there's multiple uh, type of uh, fuel can be used. So some of it are used natural gas, coal, petrol, and so on. But for TMB alone, the next slide actually gives you uh, the breakdown on uh, what is the key resources that we are re relying on right now. So uh, Malaysia still quite heavily uh, uh, rely on coal. Uh, of course, a lot of people might argue that uh, if you keep on burning coal, uh, might bring in uh, environmental impact, but uh, you need to actually balance it off uh, with the cost factor. So at the moment, coal is still quite effective. Uh, uh, and then right now, of course, we didn't have a very, very bad air quality. So everything's still under control. But of course, uh, in terms of environmental uh, uh, impact, we should actually move uh, towards renewable energy. And this sum Thing that uh, TMB try to enter into those space as well. But of course, uh, nevertheless, it's still at a very early stage. Uh, I'll say it's technically insignificant in the entire uh, 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 
uh, tower they are generating right now. And then, of course, uh, besides coal, uh, they also rely quite heavily on natural gas. And uh, those that you might heard of are coming from hydro, uh, it still didn't contribute if, uh, up to 10%. So it's, it's still quite small at the moment. And of course, uh, moving on, when we talk about uh, coal as the main uh, resources to power the electricity, at the international coal price is definitely a, a big a factor that you should consider when you talk about uh, TMB performance. So, uh, of course, right now, uh, a lot of bad news actually hit TMB. Uh, you cannot open up the office, cannot open up uh, uh, the factory, but uh, the whole thing uh, got, I would say, relief their pressure a little bit because the coal price also dropped uh, 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 significantly uh, since uh, I mean, last year. So this actually helped a little bit. But of course, uh, none of us can predict the, the coal price. But uh, one of the things that you should take note is this thing definitely will be reflected to your electricity bill. And it also will impact uh, uh, the revenue or the net profit that they are able to be bring in by TMB. So this is the current trend. Car uh, at the moment, still at the lower side. But when the entire world economy uh, start to recover, definitely coal price will start to pick up. Lah. And then uh, moving on is the uh, some of the information that we wanted to share with you. Uh, of course, I think uh, everyone knows that we received some of the rebate uh, last year. Uh, it's actually done through this thing called imbalance cost pass-through. So the coin price uh, 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 drop actually uh, helped to... Uh, how to say, have to cushion some of the impact, but the impact actually didn't reflect uh, fully in the uh, company performance because it was used to make it as a rebate back to the customer, which is some, someone like me and you. I, I believe, uh, I think back in July or, or August last year, you should receive a bill telling you what is the rebate that you received uh, in the past few months, give you a summary and a care letter uh, from the DMB and management. So this is basically done through this act activity called imbalance cost pass, pass through. So uh, that's why you will see some impact that hit them uh, last year, uh, even though coal price dropped, but then the benefit actually go back to you uh, as a consumer. So this pretty much sums up uh, what TMB uh, is all about. And of course, I will pass to Jupan to take on some of the, uh, share some of the financial information and then talking about, let's say, their balance sheet, uh, cash flow, and so on. Right. Thank you, Junbei. So if you look at TMV's uh, past few years of uh, historical performance, uh, you can see that it is a slow-growing kind of company, right? Say, for example, uh, the usage of electricity will always be on the rise because more and more, more people will, you know, uh, uh, buy new houses and then move out. And then all of these houses will definitely utilize electricity. So it will always be on a slow uh, uphill kind of growth. But time to time, uh, it would experience a little bit of uh, hiccups, like what we said just now for uh, fiscal year 2020, because uh, a large part of during the, the part of the year, uh, factories or even uh, manufacturing plants that were deemed uh, not from the essential uh, service and business actually have to scale down their operations and of course that will actually impact uh, the usage of electricity as well right and um, of course office towers and the so-called default measure to work from home also meant that um, that the tariff electricity that um, TMB collected would definitely be on lower trends as well so that is the inevitable kind of uh, uh, sometimes stop in the growth momentum that you can actually detect and see from uh, the Nanaka National Bahai. But apart from that, uh, you can see that because it is quite a uh, heavy asset intensive kind of business, uh, even though the net uh, revenue might be going up, the profit doesn't actually uh, tag along that smoothly as well. So, so you can see that over the last few years back, uh, operating profit has been relatively flat. And in fact, you can see that starting in uh, 2018, the net profit margin or the net margin actually came right down. It goes back to 
the nature of the business, right? So even though the EBITDA margin has been actually on uphill run ever since 2018, but we all we need to know that EBITDA margin is just how the company perform if we just take uh, operating margin as it is, but we do not factor in your interest and your depreciation and what's on all. But but being in an asset intensive business means that there will be time to time assets for TMB to depreciate. There will be time to time some kind of impairment that TMB needs to write off. So once all that depreciation and once all that impairment comes to play, you can see that even though 2018 EBITDA went up, but your net profit margin is actually on a downhill uh, slope, but it's stable out at roughly around 8%. Right? So this is some of the, I think, points that you need to uh, really, really understand when you actually uh, consider uh, TMB as a stock uh, into your portfolio because they are bound to this kind of risk because it's a very intensive asset reliance business. And of course, if you look at the um, total assets, also the total borrowings, uh, it at always on also on an uphill slow growth uh, to support more electric generating capacity and to ensure that the grids are more spread and covered uh, the entire Malaysia Peninsula and also some of Sarawak. Yeah, time to time you will see uh, growth in the assets, which also uh, synergize with the growth of the total revenue. But it's going to be at a slow rate because uh, it's mainly. Uh, focusing in the Malaysian consumption of electricity kind of growth to grow up higher. Whereas on the total borrowings, it's pretty much uh, thereabouts. Uh, once you already have your asset and um, you don't really need to uh, go into unnecessary huge borrowings and that could spike up the uh, borrowings and also the liability. So it has always been quite flattish uh, compared to the slow growth the total assets is actually experiencing. And if you Zoom deeper into the asset breakdown, you can see that straightforward, uh, more than 50%, in fact, 62% of it is coming from the property plant and equipment. So this is a business in generating electricity. You need to build generators and you need to ensure that uh, all of them are very well equipped and then scaled proportionately to ensure that um, it adheres to a certain uh, growth plan as well. So that's why you see that uh, it's a asset intensive business. Uh, most of the assets uh, of TMP is actually contributed by the property plant and equipment. Then uh, another huge part of it would be the so-called other assets where they would need to have parts, they would need to also have some kind of uh, inventories uh, to run uh, their, their so-called daily operations as well. So pretty much not much different uh, from what they have in 2019. And uh, if you look deeper into their debt profile, uh, it does utilize some sort of uh, gearing uh, to actually ensure that business is actually run smoothly uh, because of the huge percentage of its operations in Malaysia. So uh, also a big part of their debt is actually denominated in ringgit. So the time to time, there's also some kind of requirement to actually uh, take a preferable, favorable position or debt denominated in USD, but also uh, in the other major currencies as well. Right, so that is pretty much uh, spread very forward. So most of it is actually expiring uh, in 2025 and, and beyond. So uh, foreseeable, there wouldn't be much big issues for TNB to handle their maturing uh, debt profile based on their latest kind of um, expiry uh, portfolio of their debt. And um, one good selling point maybe for TMB is uh, they are actually even pay out, right? But compared to their net margin or net profit that we see just now, um, the dividend is actually on an uh, increasing uh, growth, right? So uh, ever since 2016, from 24.5 cents, it actually went up to around 56, 58 per, uh, cents per share, per, per share, right? So that gives you a slightly increased dividend yield, but because the share price actually didn't move up in tandem. And why did the share price uh, not move up in tandem is because uh, time to time, there will be some kind of uh, depreciation or write-off cost that can actually uh, write it down or, or draw down the so-called net profit. So, so the sentiments of the share price is actually both sides. It's from the 
uh, potential payout from the dividends, but also on the potential earnings that the company can command. So you can see that due to that factor, uh, dividends can actually go up, but uh, when share price actually stay flat or go down, uh, the dividend yield can actually swing up higher from previously around 4% in 2017 to as high as around 8% as of 2020, as of today. So it's considered a sure in business. It's not necessarily a sure uh, win when you consider it as an investment because uh, even though uh, it is one of the major uh, electric or energy pro uh, grid provider, uh, there are a lot of uncertainties when it comes to Tanaga National running its business. Coal prices goes up and down and sometimes it really needs uh, a little bit of luck to actually capture uh, their coal prices, which actually uh, powers up majority of the uh, energy requirement. And also, uh, time to time again, if um, the assets uh, under the Naga National needs to undergo some impairment or continue growth in the uh, total assets will actually also uh, grow the depreciation on a yearly basis. So uh, that will actually uh, put a cap on the potential upside of uh, asset intensive business like the Naga National, right? So that is maybe most of the part of it. So we will actually go to the last part, which is the valuation part. But of course, before that, we would just like to highlight that we do have a subscription service uh, called Kaya Plus Premium where we actually uh, do a more than we are doing right now. So uh, it will be uh, an invitation to a Facebook group and then we will have a private sharing session uh, on interesting topics as well. There will also be uh, articles which are premium analysis and also uh, more specific thematic events and, and webinars that are also included to this uh, premium club service. Right, so here's just an example of what we have previously covered. And of course, the premium articles that we actually draft out just for our premium members as well. So uh, regarding the thematic events, we will actually be talking about more in detail in Semiconductor from the very, very top part where you have the fabulous companies and the integrated uh, device manufacturers down to the end stream where most of the uh, OSAC companies that are listed in the Malaysia Stock Exchange are available. So we actually take you through the entire uh, supply chain and then try to nitpick the potential uh, winner that can go the furthest and the most in terms of an investment return perspective. So here you have it. Even though dividends have been on a growth trend, you can see that the uh, share price of the Naga National actually is on a downhill trend. From 14 ringgit five years ago until this very day today, it has actually gone down uh, to less than 10 ringgit. So it's currently at 9 ringgit and 90 cents per share. And the PE is at 15 times, roughly 15 times with the dividend yield of around 4%, right? So Chun Beng, uh, what are your opinions? Is this a stock that uh, you would actually consider because of the very uh, favorable dividend payout, but um, what about the share price uh, movement? Yeah, I think when you uh, plan to invest into TMB, I think just need to take note on a, on a few things. Uh, it pretty much uh, linked to the the electricity consumption within Malaysia as the main uh, driver uh, uh, of the demand. And of course, uh, coal price oil thing is another factor that might impact their net profit. But I think we should go from the top first, uh, the, the, the demand itself. Uh, Malaysia is a developing country. Uh, it's not, uh, I wouldn't say, it's, it's technically it's not a third world country that still have uh, a lot of growth potential. Uh, but of course, we have our advantage in terms of growing a percentage if you compare to developed country uh, like, like US and, and so on. So they are still growing potential, but it won't be as huge as country, for example, Indonesia, Vietnam, and so on. So this pretty much limit the, the, the growing potential of TMB in the future, unless uh, they manage to venture into some of the other places, uh, for example, expand beyond Malaysia or expand beyond electricity. Or else uh, you can only hope that it stay around this price uh, maybe after the pandemic, definitely we'll have some small rebounds, but it will stay, stick there. 
but if you're confident uh, based on their, their historical uh, dividend payout uh, uh, info, uh, since it's, they are proving that uh, they have been keep on giving up more and more in terms of percentage, then you can try uh, to, to take your, your bet uh, during this time because now it's still relatively low uh, compared to the last few years. And then uh, you can just use the low entry point uh, with the hope that uh, uh, the whole thing remain about the same and then have some small rebounds and you can earn the dividends. But there are a, a, a few more things that you should consider. Uh, beside dividend as the best uh, factor, actually in Malaysia, there are more than just one TMB uh, uh, that technically in some so-called show me business and offer a very good uh, dividend uh, uh, payout policy. So just a few things I uh, uh, should take note. Uh, uh, definitely, it's too big to fail. They won't fail. But, but of course, uh, the upside is also not, not looking very, very bright. But right now, definitely, it's one of the, uh, the, the lowest point due, due to the overall sentiments. And if you are someone who look for stability, of course, TMB is one of the things that you should put inside your watch list. And continue to monitor. Yeah. So of course we will also be providing a little bit of future outlooks that can either make or break TNB. Uh, if you look at the so-called uh growth for TNB uh in fiscal year twenty twenty, you can see that actually it actually shrunk. Right. Uh, previously we were always all about uh in tandem with the so-called GDP. Uh, meaning to say that once the country grows, of course, the consumption and the growth of the uh, uh, electricity will also tack along as well. But when your operations and your so-called SME actually uh, are forced to undergo lockdown and um, uh, you cut off your potential outlook in terms of growth, then, of course, uh, it will also swing down to negative regions in tandem as well. So this is expected. But moving forward, uh, from there, which you already know, uh, it would be possible that uh, we would see some kind of gradual uh, recovery for the uh, so-called uh, stop in momentum that happened in fiscal year 2020, right? So it would be already proven that um, TMB is also uh, going to rebound and recover with, together with GDP. So this is what they have provided. And uh, sure enough, if you give it a long enough time, once COVID passed, then definitely things or the growth will actually swing back up to a positive region, right? So it's really up to the investor's point of view to actually guesstimate when is the so-called optimum uh, recovery point uh, where the market starts to get uh, more uh, attentive to the stock like, like TMB, right, as a recovery play. And of course, if you look at the um, so-called uh, peak demand, uh, it is always been on an increasing uh, growth as well, right? So uh, ever since fiscal year 11 up to fiscal year 2020, you see that um, the peak demand uh, is actually uh, always on an on increasing growth because it is always tapping on the country's economic growth as well, right? So there will always be some sort of a slowing push, slow growth momentum that a company like TNB is going to experience just that. Uh, time to time, there will be some black swan events uh, that will actually pull down uh, the company's performance. And of course, if you look at the future kind of um, prospects, which is the renewable energy uh, initiatives, you can see that uh, TNB is also targeting to increase uh, the uh, in renewable energy uh, initiatives, which contributes to more electricity generation from uh, renewable energy, green energy, right? So as of now, you can see that we have came quite some kind, quite quite a long journey. We actually increased more than fifty percent uh, to what we are now at the three thousand and four hundred mega megawatts. So it's more than fifty percent what we did in uh, twenty fifteen. And moving on to the next five years, uh, the growth will actually be more than hundred uh, percent to hit around uh, estimated uh, eight point three uh thousand megawatts right so this will also come from the international uh, contribution as well where tmb right now is still uh, very much focusing or relying on the uh, malaysia uh, electric consumption uh, as a growth prospect so moving forward in 2025 uh, they, they have given a very very uh shiny 
uh, prospect that uh, they aim to actually grow the uh, international business to a higher percentage contribution. And of course, uh, talking about um, energy generation growth, uh, it will actually also uh, involve a certain kind of capex, uh, right? Uh, would actually uh, contribute also to every whatever uh, prospects that TMB uh, actually wants to uh, initiate as well. So you can see that there will be uh, uh, also an increase in terms of the uh, annual regulated capex to support energy transition. So uh, from 12.3%, to 19.3% and this can be in various, various form uh, to LED relamping, uh, advanced metering infrastructure as well. So all of these were also uh, built onto the uh, uh, initiatives that um, TMB is going to plan to grow uh, for the next coming few years. And of course, uh, I'll maybe pass this last, I would say special uh, kind of catalyst uh, that TMB is planning to go into, which is totally out of what they are doing right now, which is going to uh, fiber optics. So, Chunbing, uh, will this actually be a special kind of initiatives that uh, will put TMB uh, on a brighter future? Uh, I think this one still need a few more years to monitor, but nevertheless, they managed to lay out uh, in these few states uh, to support the internet uh, connection uh, through their fiber optic uh, 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 in, uh, uh, I'll say fiber optic uh, facility uh, uh, layout uh, in the places like Malacca, Para, and so on. But of course, this is a, another competitive uh, space. Uh, you have the dominant player, uh, TM, uh, Telecom Malaysia, that is actually uh, owning uh, the, the, major the major share uh, of the entire uh, uh, fiber uh, footprint in, in Malaysia. And then, of course, they list it out to Maxis which is another big supplier to, of internet in, in Malaysia. And then for condo, you got a player like Time, uh, which sort of dominant uh, all the condominium uh, uh, in Klang Valley. So every one of them have their niche. Time is the king inside condo. Uh, uh, but when you go beyond uh, uh, Klang Valley, uh, beyond the condo, uh, it's mainly uh, do dominated by TM. Uh, and of course, they list out some of the uh, uh, services go to Maxis and then let Maxis to package it up and offer it up. So it will be a challenging space. Uh, not only these few guys, uh, you, you also have Cellcom uh, also have their broadband service uh, coming in. Some of the people are like uh, internet, mobile internet uh, uh, providers also into this space, right? I mean, in the internet space. Of course, when we talk about fiber optic, maybe it's lesser, but it's quite difficult. But it's a good sign, I mean, uh, rather than into some regulated space like electricity, which uh, a lot of things is actually uh, controlled by the government, uh, that squeeze some of the uh, po growth potential and also the, the profit margin during spe special time. Uh, uh, this is something that worth checking out uh, whether they can continue to grow or not. But of course, now it's very, very small. Uh, they have did their investment. Uh, we shall see whether they start to make an impact into their revenue book. Lah. At the moment, they still part under others, the very, very small part. Yeah. So I think that's about it. So we, as a conclusion, TMB, it's too big to grow at an event in, uh, at, at a fantastic kind of growth rate, uh, but it is stable. Uh, but due to the so-called nature of the business, time to time again, uh, there will be a certain uh, increase in depreciation and also in terms of the write downs that can impact the net profit margin as well. But overall, if you look at the business uh, it's being uh, operated, uh, it's also a certain, uh, it does give a certain kind of allure and interest from a dividend point of view, but do take note further that, um, of course, if TN, TNB decides to uh, go in deeper with their broadband business, that would mean that uh, they will need to incur higher uh, R&D costs as well. So you will always have to take uh, another perspective on it. It is currently considered maybe as a good uh, dividend play, but if the company wants to double down its investment into the broadband business, then uh, that means also there wouldn't be so much cash to dish out as cash dividends to shareholders as well. right? And of course, Mr. Strubing said, 
this is a very uh, congested space. Uh, you really need uh, some kind of uh, marketing and also some kind of uh, uh, strategy to actually become uh, victorious in this very uh, congested and highly competitive broadband business. So I'll probably leave the uh, decision to you guys uh, to actually dig deeper and study deeper on whether uh, Tanaka National Power Hut at today's price, less than 10 ringgit a share is actually uh, a good investment or uh, investment or company that you want to stay away with because of the uncertainty. So, of course, if you really like our sharing as of today, do give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel and let us know in the comment section uh, what are the other companies that you want us to actually share for the next episode of our Not So The Next Show. But that's it for today. Uh, we will see you in the next episode. Take care and bye-bye.